Welcome once again to Mondays with Marty. My name is Cassie and this is my dog Marty and today we're going to talk about grooming and that's because it's getting to be the time of year when all dogs are going to start shedding in larger quantities than normal. Um, they're going to start losing their winter coats and moving that summer coat in. So it's a great opportunity to just do any regular routine grooming with your dog. Now routine grooming is beneficial for all dogs, not just long haired, not just double coated, short haired dogs as well. And this is for a couple reasons. Um, for one, it's a great opportunity to encourage your dog to want to be near you, um, to build value for your dog being close. You are giving your dog some really quality pets, you're giving him positive feedback by telling him he's a good boy while you're petting him, and also giving him treats. So it's a great chance for you and your dog to bond without your dog really working aside from you just rewarding him for being close. Um, it's also a great opportunity for you as an owner to really get your hands on your dog, to rub your hands all over and look for lumps and bumps that may be new, that may not be supposed to be there, um, to just feel around your dog and check to make sure they're okay, check their skin health, um, look for ticks, look for any old injuries, but also look for foreign matter in coats. Uh, Marty, for example, routinely brings home burrs that we may, may or may not find unless we really rub our hands all over him. Um, so doing some routine grooming is a great way just to get your hands on your dogs. Um, I mean, think about going to the vet. The first thing the vet or the vet tech does when they come in the room is rub their hands on your dog, look at their ears, look at their eyes. So doing this at home may help you find something that you may not have caught until your dog's next vet appointment. So routine grooming is great. So moving into short haired dogs, which obviously Marty is not, but there are still some good tools for short haired dogs. Um, it's much less extensive than with a long haired dog, like Marty is, but with short haired dogs, the bristle brush is really gonna be your best friend. Um, it's just soft bristles. It gives them a good sensation of being rubbed while still working out some of that um, short hair off that they're shedding. Now with a short haired dog, their hair is, and this isn't always the case, but does tend to be a little bit coarser than some long haired dogs. So it's best to just go with the grain of the hair. So if your dogs, most dogs hair grows um, towards their back end, so brushing with the hair is pretty important because if you go against the hair, it's generally gonna be a bit uncomfortable for your dog. And the other brush that some short haired dogs will use, um, namely those with curly short hair, is going to be a slicker brush. So these are, and it, this is nice because you can push out the hair, um, it's self cleaning. But that'll help work through some of the longer short hairs, um, or if you do have a curly haired dog. So with short haired dogs, you really don't have to groom them very often. Um, it's up to you to figure out how often you want to groom them. Um, but again, it is still beneficial to groom them on a routine basis, so maybe every couple of weeks, um, just keeping an eye on their coat, plus it'll decrease the amount of hair that actually ends up on your floor or your furniture as they're shedding out their coats. Now with long haired dogs, um, the first tool that most long haired dog owners are going to want to get is a bristle brush. Um, this is going to help get the tangles out of your dog's coat, just the big ones, kind of like brushing long human hair. Um, definitely you want a bristle brush. And then the next beneficial tool for long haired dogs is gonna be a metal comb. Um, I like this one the best because it has two sides. It has a coarser edge side and a finer side. Um, so once I brush a long haired dog with a bristle brush, then you can follow up with um, the coarser side and then the fine side. It just really helps you get all of those small knots out of your dog's hair before they become mats. So mats are essentially really long, thick knots that are almost impossible to untangle. You can untangle them, but it's very difficult. And honestly, oftentimes it's gonna be better just to cut the mat out um, close to the skin, but cut the mat out rather than trying to get it detangled because it's gonna be slow, it's gonna be painful for your dog, um, just cut them out. But using these tools, um, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis will definitely help keep those in check. And again, you'll find a lot of 
um, any foreign material that might be in your dog's coat, this will for sure find it. Now, the last type of coat we're going to talk about is a double coat. So Marty is actually a double coated dog. And what this refers to is a coat that has two layers. There's going to be an outer guard layer, which is what you see when you're looking at Marty. It's this long, uh, dark coat. It's technically coarser with him. He's pretty soft, um, so it's not hard by any means, but it's um, then underneath you can see these gray fine hairs. That's the really soft stuff. So that's going to be his inner insulation layer. Um, and that's what he sheds out in the winter. So the difficult part with that is when you're brushing a double coated dog, it's really important that you get that inner layer um, because that's where you can really build up some mats because it's really fine. And that's what they'll shed out or blow out in the spring is they'll just drop a lot of that inner layer because they don't need the insulation in the summer. So similar to the long haired dogs, definitely recommend these two tools. The first one you use is the bristle brush, again, just to get the general knots out um, to smooth up the coat. I also would recommend the Shed Magic for when they're really shedding. Um, this is, does a great job of pulling out that inner layer of coat when they're starting to shed it out. Um, now this is not a detangler, so it is really important that you use a bristle brush and then follow up with this type of a product to pull out that inner hair. And then I also like to use this comb. Um, I will use it on his body and just push the hair forward and then comb it back just because you're really getting in there and it's a good opportunity for me to really look at his skin um, because while I do have him on a flea and tick medication or preventative, um, if he does get a tick, I'm not gonna find it <laughs> until it's really big. So I like to use this comb just to really make sure his skin's doing all right, he doesn't have any ticks or fleas or anything like that, or any other type of bug living in his coat. Um, this is also super great for um, behind his ears. He's got these little coarse stringy hairs that get pretty oily, so I'll take this comb to really make sure they don't get matted up, because that does happen. Um, and then he does, and this is pretty common, especially with longer hair, uh, double coated dogs and that's the other thing short haired dogs can have double coats um, great examples are labs and corgis they have short hair but they do have a double coat so just because you don't have a long haired dog does not mean that they may not have a double coat Dan, go away so then the other area that i'll use this metal comb on is actually um, what i call his britches so it's this really long coarse hair here by his rear end it's pretty crimpy it's it's just really thick and he never really sheds it out like he will the rest of his body so with this I'll take this metal comb and really kind of comb through this because it's so coarse the shed magic almost can't get through it so I'll really use the metal comb to get through those britches um, because that is also a high mat area uh, when he has had mats they've been behind his ears and in his britches. So I really want to focus on those areas when I am grooming him just because I don't want those mats to turn into his whole leg because they, they grow. So I like to make sure those are under control early. Um, and then with any dog, I like to finish grooming with a coat conditioner. So a coat conditioner is great just because it helps to kind of, again, condition their coat. Just like you would put conditioner in your hair, it makes it soft, it makes it a little more dirt resistant, um, and it's just, it makes them really shiny, makes them smell good without actually giving them a bath. This is actually a horse product called Shoshin. Um, it's honestly my favorite because it comes in a big bottle, so it goes a long way, and it works really well. Um, so I'm a big fan of it. We do have some dog specific coat conditioners, but I'm a big fan of this one. Um, and I'll just give him his whole body a couple spritzes and I really focus on, again, his britches. I'll really make sure I get it into his britches and behind his ears. And then I'll just use the bristle brush or if you have a short haired coat, use your, um, or this is the bristle brush. I use the pin brush and the long coat. And then um, just brush it and work it into their coat. Marty, come here, come here, buddy and I'll work it into their coats. 
Um, so that's grooming. One area of grooming we didn't talk about was toenails, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with that, just because that in itself is kind of a topic. Um, but keeping those routinely cut is super important for not only your dog's nail health, but also just their overall structural health, because if their toenails get too long, it's going to change how they step on the ground. So um, if you're not comfortable clipping your dog's toenails, you can always go to a vet or a groomer and they will definitely do that for you. Um, and then one little resource I did want to show is some of our stores do have these fun little booklets which give you some details on coat types and proper tools for those coats. Uh, we work with Safari for most of our grooming products and they do a great job and they've got a bunch of good videos on YouTube as well. So this is our grooming rack. Um, anyway, if you have any questions about grooming, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, and if you need any recommendations on tools, feel free to stop by any of our stores and we will happily help you out. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in a couple weeks.